I want all of you to look at this picture, just process it. What's going on in this picture? Somebody raise your hand. They're making the pattern like hard to follow. Okay, yep. The biggest predator towards the zebras has a color deficiency in their eyes. So black and white and stripes really messes with their eyes. So their main defense mechanism of camouflage is black and white stripes. When their primary predator comes for these animals, doesn't know how many of them there are, and it has a hard time determining directions of movement. So that's where that comes from. 50% of everything in the jungle is trying to kill you. Not including the enemy. That's what the students here at the U.S. Army's Jungle Operations Training Course in Hawaii are taught on day one. But if the enemy can't see you in the jungle, then you may have a better chance of survival. That's why these students learn how to use camouflage to avoid detection. We are going to go over a basic level knowledge of how to apply and deploy camouflage. As tension between the United States and China builds, the Department of Defense is sending more troops to the Asia-Pacific region. So today's class about camouflage is especially relevant for Master Sergeant Raymond Sigmund. In the coming months after this course, I'll be going to the Philippines for about two months. It's awesome that when that announcement came out that I get to be part of the one for units to go down there, conducting all the training we'll be doing in the Philippines and uh, the joint operations we'll be doing during that two month period. So the jungle specifically without looking at it right now, I can tell you there's a pattern trace that it has is everything grows up. So it's in that vertical stance, where everything's up and down. So you want to try to avoid making patterns that go horizontal across your body if possible. Everyone's going to apply face paint and then Wes and myself are gonna come around and give you tips. We asked a jungle school instructor to show us the correct way for soldiers to apply camouflage. Camouflage, we're gonna start with face paint first. We're gonna talk about covering your face um, and hands or any kind of exposed skin, so your neck as well, behind the ears and behind the neck. I like to start with the black or the gray to apply like a base layer. Out here in the jungle with the vegetation we have, we found just from lessons learned in Vietnam and stuff from our own knowledge uh, experience, going more of a vertical slanted stripe pattern, uh, we would call it the blotchy stripe pattern, is the best for a jungle environment. I always wear a some type of headgear, so a boonie or a PC um, or a helmet. So I do eyebrows and down. And if you do, some people that don't wear headgear, they do all the way up to their forehead into their hair. Um, but if you do put a headgear on and you just get face paint all over your, or your boonie, which is not something I like to do. So I do eyebrows down and then I put my headgear on to close off my forehead. We're looking for stripes, kind of blotchy stripes. So, cover all the way down. I'm gonna do three or four um, darker black or grayish stripes and then I'm gonna fill in the rest of the colors. And so we'll kind of come in all together in a second. Burn your eyes or anything? No, no. You you actually want it behind your eyelids. So when you do close your eyes, your eyelids are not just the obvious with the color of your skin. So they're not fully like horizontal kind of rainbow stripes. They uh, they are a little blotched and they're a little all different directions. And also that blends with the uh, vegetation because we have a lot of vertical vegetation. So doing that to your face paint is going to allow you to blend in a little bit better. So that's a good base layer. Um, little trick that I have with getting face paint off your fingers, if you're gonna use the same finger, is the inside of your pockets. You just rub the inside of your pocket with your face paint. It'll get your finger off and clean. You can use the next piece. So next I'm gonna start with green. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit more heavier on the green and the brown just because that's what our vegetation will reflect. Um, so I'm gonna start alternating across my black stripes as my base. So getting up into the temple and then continuing it down. And 
you want to get down into your neck. And then if you are wearing like one of our OCP tops and you op opt not to wear the shirt, you're going to go down into your neck as well, just to get all the exposed skin. Yeah. And then getting, getting your lips uh, is also a big thing as well. Now what if you accidentally get, get it in your mouth? You try to avoid that? Yeah, I try to avoid it, but it's not gonna hurt you too bad. What does it taste like if you have to get it in your mouth? Kind of like any kind of makeup would, or kind of sunscreen really, because this actually has sunscreen in it. All right, one more shape of green. All right, so now I got most of it in. I'm gonna finish it up, touch the rest with the brown. After I get the brown in there, I'm gonna go through and probably reapply to my darker black stripes to make them more predominant. But I do like to go a little bit heavier on the brown because it definitely helped with our red mud that we have out here in Hawaii. So you can see the stripes still there, but it's more that blotchy pattern instead of that predominant, like just main stripe. And I personally think that having multiple colors over your high points, it allows it to blend a little bit better than just having one solid color to it. Okay. All right, and then for my ears and my neck and the stuff like that, three fingers into all of them, you're just gonna kind of cover it all and then back around your neck same thing um just kind of having those stripes on there but it's just kind of more that blotchy pattern that we're looking for this ear too behind the ear in the ear and then one from behind the neck all around and you can expose skin like that and then if i were to not be wearing gloves i would do the same thing with my hands camel those up but i usually like to wear gloves just because keep your hands safe and protected Personally, I think I'm gonna go back in with my darker color and kind of touch up those stripes, make them a little bit more predominant, just for the appeal. And then one more time back in with the green, just to get it more to pop. Uh. So, and then I would finish the look with some kind of headgear um, just to close off any of the white spots that I have. Yeah, so that would be face paint. Cool. Sick. Yeah. There you go, there you go. But applying camouflage to your face and skin isn't enough. Soldiers must also conceal any equipment that could reveal their presence. We get issued these solid black rifles and out here in the jungle, that sticks out like a sore thumb. We know that there's nothing straight in the, no straight edges in the, in the natural environment and there's nothing that's just solid black unless you're on a black sand beach. So with rifles, um, usually if your units allow it, uh, a lot of soldiers will paint their rifles the same method that we would either paint our face or like I have painted my helmet, same stripes. Um, just to break up that actual color. Um, this was like a tan, but that sticks out like in the jungle like crazy, adding the same stripe pattern that we have with our face. With the rifle, you can either spray paint it or they make this like foam tape that you can tape on and you can actually wrap your rifle in it and the camel it up into certain places just like that. Um, you can do it all the way down, you can do it on the butt stock. Um, obviously you're not gonna be probably doing it up on the barrel because it's gonna get hot when you're firing. You're not gonna do it on the muzzle device. If I was gonna do this for real, I would finish this all the way out. I would probably do my pistol grip on my rifle and I would do all of my butt stock. And then if I had an optic on here, I would camel up the optic. And I would also, if I had a laser, I'd camel the laser as well. But this foam uh, tape is super great, it sticks on itself, um, it's gonna, get this shine away. In the
jungle, soldiers also use natural resources to complement their artificial camouflage. Rule of thumb, we like to teach our students 70% natural vegetation or camo and then 30% of artificial. So your artificial being this foam that we talked about, the paint, the face paint, any stuff like that. Um, for out here, we like to either put um, vegetation, this is like uh, that gra elephant grass or any kind of bushes of the stuff that you're gonna be walking in, uh, you're gonna put it in your helmets. So like through the stuff like that, you're gonna have it sticking out, have it all layered around. So you actually blend into the bushes and the material a little bit better. Um, you could also put these all across your ruck strap or your rucksack. Um, a lot of students do that and they blend in very, very good. Uh, but you gotta be careful because obviously if I'm walking in an area that has a whole bunch of this stuff in it, I'm probably not gonna want to put this in there, right? Cause it's obviously gonna counteract what I'm actually trying to do. So choosing the right camo or the vegetation for the area you're walking in. Um, we teach our students as you're moving, you're patrolling, you're grabbing fresh vegetation to put on you. If you move to a new area, you take all it off, grab new vegetation. Or if you're walking for so long in the same kind of area and this stuff starts to turn brown and you're still walking into a bunch of lush green alive vegetation, you're gonna wanna change it out and put the live stuff in there. Um, doing this and getting rid of uh, the human silhouette and the human man-made uh, items on your body or whatever you're carrying is gonna allow you to blend in a lot better. Um, but out here in the jungle with the vegetation, blending in is actually super easy if you do it the right way. Yeah. Cool, that's great. Boom. That's all I got in my brain. Um, <laughs>